There are huge differences between painting in oil and painting in watercolour and ordinarily I am a watercolourist and so today I'm painting in oil paint so if you're interested in how I painted this, how long it took for a watercolourist to paint in oils and a discussion about the differences between those two media then please stick around especially if you've been considering painting in oils and you've already been painting in watercolours then you're going to be absolutely delighted and uh, I'd love to hear any oil painters who've got a bit of advice for me because boy am I at the beginning in terms of my oil painting. Here goes guys. But now we all know that I'm normally a watercolour artist and there's, I like to throw in a little bit of mixed media. I love a bit of mixed media. Just put some in there. So there I was on Blue Thumb and looking at all the paintings that have sold and the vast majority are oil paintings. And there were some oil paintings there that I thought, surely I can do that. I might conduct a little experiment, see whether I can uh, kind of fudge my way through another oil painting. I feel like <laughs> that's all I do when I have success with an oil painting. It's just kind of play a bit. Just using my nail to scratch in. Ugh, I th think this is going straight through the glove. <laughs> Just went straight up my nail. <laughs> okay, I need a sharp, pointy thing. This is exactly what I need. I just want to put in some marks that are a bit interesting. I've got a big brown mark over there for some reason. Okay, let's get rid of that big brown mark. A bit more sky. There are dramatic differences between the way you paint in oils and the way you paint in watercolour. And I am so familiar with the way in which the colour goes down when you're painting in watercolour. It's just really bizarre when you're painting in oils and you put the colour down and it stays in that same spot and technically I'm painting wet in wet which I think oil painters call a la prima. I've always been a bit confused about exactly what that is but that it does refer to oil painting. Oh that's a grey sky isn't it? This is um needs a little more ugh those little lumpy bits, yuck. Okay, so here's my palette knife. Do I just sharpen a bit of that edge there? Just soften over there and sharpen there and then sharpen up the top there. And that can be soft on that side. So maybe this side should be a little darker. I'm just going to blend this. I do understand sometimes when I'm having a little play in oil paints, I do understand why people absolutely love it. It's got the ability to just sit there and wait for your next move. You don't have to move quickly at all, which is so interesting. I'm so used to um, having a paint. I mean, watercolour is kind of demanding in comparison to oil painting. What I think this is uh, missing is some darks and a little bit of a focal point. So I'm going to get out some Prussian blue. And I was going to put it on my piece of glass, but I think I'll save myself time because it's only such a tiny little outlet. I think I'll save myself time and put it oh, straight onto. Ugh. Oof. The lid of this. I inherited these and they're in a mess. And it's so weird every time because my mum gave them to me when she stopped painting in oil, which is how I come to have oil paints. But she, uh, 
she was like the tidiest woman you ever met in every way. She was meticulous about being tidy and clean and and um and it's so weird that um she didn't keep the paints neat. I because I do. Okay. Looks a little bit look like a rock. It also looks um, a bit amateurish. So there are certain things in watercolour you can do that really make your painting um, more professional looking. And they're, they're just little things that really can make you stand out from the rest, uh, depending on your view of watercolour, but if you're watching my channel, it's because you probably agree with me that um, no, no idea what I was going to say. I just got lost in the enjoyment of this colour going down that beautiful just getting into the, the fun of this then. I can walk away for hours and it'll look exactly the same when I come back. And that is another big difference between painting in oils and uh, painting in watercolour. In, when you paint in oils, the, I'm just wondering what colour to go back to, all oh, this pretty ochre colour. When you're painting in oils, the colour you see here and now is very much what it will look like when it's dry. And there's no other paint that behaves like that. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong about that, but acrylics dry darker. That, I know that for sure. And watercolour lies, li dries lighter, and I'm very sure about that too. I'm just going to clear the tip again. So when I walk away from this activity to go out, I will I'm just clean the tip again. Come back to a painting that looks exactly as, the same as the moment I left it. All right, lovely. It's getting there, it's pretty good. I'm wondering whether I could flick out some lovely leaf, uh, like reeds, you know, like say that these are little water holes all along here. Oops, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. And there, and has that helped at all? Yeah, I think so. A little bit there. I think I like the blue up there as well as in the foreground. So I wonder if I can mix it. Yes, I can. Isn't that beautiful? All right. I'll just try and re-establish those lines that went down like that. This is 
is the darker, softer side. That's in front, I want that to look like that's rugged too. They don't look like green trees, they look like weird things. That's very uh, amusing. All right, let's clean this then. Put that sky back in. And... I think I'll just go over it with some <laughs> earthy coloured... I definitely am channeling something a bit Australian, that's for sure. How's that looking? Right, it's way too much here. Those things are just annoying looking. And so instead of that, I need to put in a little... Um, ...animal shape. the funniest kangaroo you've ever seen, isn't it? I'm just going to leave it like that because it's uh, funny. Oh no, I have to go out in front and give it some paws. <laughs> it looks like a half a duck and half a little squat funny looking animal. I don't care, that'll do. I probably should have gone for a bird shape. I just wanted something to interrupt your eye as you're going in, so... All right, get rid of it. It's not really funny. Um, how about a water hole? Let's have a bottom to the water hole. Side there. And I need to swap these things. Okay, turn this over. like those little lines there. That's funny. That's kind of good. I think what I need to do is get rid of that, that and that. So this is just too wet to put um, the, the oil stick on top of other oil sticks. So I think I might go really, really light. Because uh, I can. I can put white on the top if I want to. What else have I got that's really lovely and light? Yellow would be nice. I've got, oh, I've got orange. This is cadmium orange. Like, um, oh, wow, okay, that's beautiful. Okay, bit of this into the rock pool. Put some thicker paint on top now. I'll just fix that in a second. And then, you know, perhaps there's a little, oh, perhaps there's some blossoms, wildflowers. <gasps> it's gonna be wildflowers. Oh, I like that idea. And then there's a reason to be 
dragging the orange around and the orange is going to lead your eye in. <laughs> Get rid of that here. I don't want that big blob there anymore. It's just not necessary. I'm going to make it flat, hopefully. Like that. And then what I'll do is put some of these marks going through it. And some of them would go around it. Oh, that's better, isn't it? Just go through, back through some of the orange, that's all. Just to kind of incorporate it. And not look like it actually was dumped in the way that I did. These I'm keeping kind of flattish. This looks terrible again. <laughs> okay, put, go back to putting some orange in it. Just a little bit. And then drag these in. Just make it smooth around. Drag them back in. Because it just stays wet all the time. You can keep working into that area. That's better. Just interrupt it a little more and a little more. There. All right. Now, the mountain is looking like it's off in the distance. These kind of tree-like things look like they could do with some foliage. Will it work with the orange? Haha. <laughs> I don't know what they could be. I quite like them though. They look a little bit like oversized flowers. So I'm just going to put some orange near them on the ground. And some over here like they are actually flowers. Okay, now if I just change that colour, not mix it but just get another colour to sit on top probably a green but not with the oil stick because that's just mashing everything up is there a green here there's a brown greens if we've got terra vert which I never find oh green gold this is Australian green oh gold Oh, that colour is great. This is a, such a good selection of paint. Okay, now I want the green to sit on top with these. Every time I pick up the or orange, I'm going to clean it off and put in more. Clean it off, more green. Just want bits to sit on top in amongst that. How's that? Too blockish. There. Bit more. There. And just knock back that tiny little bit there. Didn't quite sit on top. There. And into that green, I need to just separate out a shape of a tree there. And then I'm just going to soften behind it a little, like so. And then it looks a little like one tree is in front of the other. And then I want to just add some of that beautiful green. I don't want it in just one spot. So I'll add it here, clean it off because it's picking up other colours. I'll add it in here, here. Oh, it's kind of beautifully glazing on top. Oh, so pretty. 
put some colour there. I've got a few colours and <laughs> keeps picking up a range of colours, which is kind of nice. Right, that's good. And then I just need to darken that um, green. So I could do that with the Prussian. That would be the most logical one. I don't love Prussian blue, but that's what I've used all over the place. So I know that that is the best idea. And then I'm sticking within a color palette range. There we go. I'm just darkening some of that green. Because if that green appears here in the foreground, it would be an adjusted color off in the distance. It would be grayed down and it would be more, um, by which I mean more muted. All right, those trees are, I don't know whether they're funny or convincing as trees. I just want to blend this the tiniest bit on what would be the left hand side of the tree and just adding darks really. Okay, so same with the orange over in the background. A little bit of that um, Prussian blue and I'm just going to mix it with Oh, you know what? I'll mix it with the orange. I wonder if it'll get a nice grey. It's an orangey grey. Oh, it's kind of beautiful. Okay, so we want that on these orange plants to do the same thing. If they're off in the distance, their colour will be more muted. I'll get rid of that bit there. But I kind of like the idea of bits of the colour pop through. Um, but in the foreground, you would see it. Just put in some of them again. And they'd be thinner as well. So I was just turning my blade to get a thinner. And these would be, if they're supposed to be trees, that tree here would be bigger like that and let's take it up a little bring that one a bit forward now I've just turned it into a little mess I think it was better before I did that bit anyway a little more that beautiful mix over there with the orange in it and a little more over here. I'm just going to switch to my non-dominant hand just because I think that's what I need is to come from the right and up. It is a right hand as well I can tell you. That's all right. It's all right. I'm going to add the same bits of the same color over here and there. Okay, let's see if we can widen this trunk again. Not really. I need to put in black. Actually, black. I'll get it on this side of the palette knife. I need to put in black there between the trees like so <laughs> I keep improving it and then thinking oh it's not done yet and then I make it worse again okay I'm going to settle on that. I'm not going to change it again because I keep making it worse again. I would love to know how oil painters like to do their edges. 
I've just chosen a colour from in, within the painting and I'm painting the edges. But if I'm truthful, I went to my box of oil paints because I inherited these. So if I'm truthful, what I did was find one of the colours that I had the most tubes of. And I had lots of this light red and it tones in nicely with the painting. So I thought this is what I would do. So I'd love to know oil painters, what do you do for the edge? I don't want that color to come on the front. So do I just let that go for now and top it up later with the sky color? Because I can't go doing that on all the edges, can I? So how do I solve this problem? I no longer, I don't want to have to bring each of the colors separately round. What I want to do is put this light red on the corners. Also, how do you cope with, um, have you got, well, not cope isn't the right word, but what do you oil painters do when um, you're painting all, si all four sides? I, I can't lean this anywhere. I can't do more than two sides at the one time. Uh, so, because, like, where would I sit it? Do you? Oh, I suppose that's a stupid question, isn't it? I suppose you just get containers. And I'm just giving this a really neat run over with my palette knife. I love palette knives because I don't have to clean my brush. That's one of the reasons why I've always loved watercolour because the cleanup was so fast that uh, that's yeah one of the many reasons why I love watercolour. I don't like washing brushes in toxic stuff and you, yes I am aware you can use oils uh, oil to break down the oil paint. All right Looking forward to hearing from you guys. Bye. There are dramatic differences between the way you paint in oils and the way you paint in watercolour. So we all know that I'm a watercolourist first and mixed media second and then I like to play with other materials. So today an oil stick and I've got a few oil paints over here. In watercolour you want to be preserving your whites. When you're working in oils or acrylics, you want that white to go and appear. In watercolour, if I wanted to put that on, I may have painted it negatively. There's, there's a, a little bit of planning when it comes to watercolour. But I went on to Blue Thumb, that's this um, website where you can sell your art. People are um, regularly recommending it to me. Have you tried it? Have you tried it? And yeah, I have. I didn't have success on Blue Thumb. I've, I, in fact, I haven't had success with any online platform. I've had plenty of success in real life. My point that I wanted to make, I'm just pushing that green in amongst it because it's beautiful. I'll put some green down here. Maybe a bit more green there and then a bit of green, bit of green.